Hi, Tim Newman with Softlight Studios, and it's Saturday. And if you've been following us for any period of time at all, you know that Saturday is Mastering Photoshop today. Every Saturday, we bring you a new Photoshop tutorial and or quick tip. Today, we are going to start our new series on layers in Photoshop. We are going to start off taking a look at single layer documents in Photoshop. Then we will progress on to multiple layer documents in Photoshop. We'll take a look at how layers interact with one another, how they can be used in building composites, focus stacking, HDRs, all of the really fun things that Photoshop can do. And then we will wrap up this series with a look at layers, tips, tricks, and techniques. Thanks for tuning in today. We hope you enjoy the video. So to me, the best way to learn about layers in Photoshop is to start off with a blank Photoshop document and understand how Photoshop approaches layers within that document. So we're going to come over here and we're going to execute the file new command, as you can see me doing here. And when we execute the file new command, we get the new document dialog box as we have displayed here in the center. Um, over here on the right side of the new document, dialog box is a number of parameters that you can set that will control how this new document is going to be made. Additionally, at the top of the new document dialog box, there are a number of category labels up here, as you can see me pointing to, and those category labels take us to collections of preset documents where all these parameters have been set for us. And these categories are really grouped by document type. So here we have a collection of presets that are photo document types. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're drastically different than the other category types you see here, but these are typical document sizes and resolutions that we would use for printing photos, for example. So we can see a number of these document presets here. And if I click on this little view all presets label here in the middle, I get the rest of them opened up for me. And what I'm looking for here is this landscape 8x10 preset, which will help me to build this document without me having to go through and set every one of the parameters individually. If we come back over here to the right after we've clicked on that preset, we can see over here that, in fact, this preset is going to create a document for us that's going to be 10 inches wide and 8 inches in height, which will naturally yield us a document that's landscape-oriented on the screen. Additionally, we see that this preset is giving us a resolution of 300 pixels per inch, which is certainly uh, an adequate setting for a print quality document. This document, when we're done, will print well later at a, at a nice resolution that makes the document look good. Here under color mode, we can see that the color mode is being set for us to RGB color. That's red, green, blue color. Naturally matches up really well with RGB images out of a camera. So if we're editing photos, more often than not, we're going to be in this RGB color mode. You can see that it's set our bit depth resolution at 8 bits. This is 8 bits per channel, so 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, and so on. This gives us a significant number of colors, but I like to have the ability to have additional color capability in my document. So I typically always work in 16-bit mode when I'm working in RGB documents in Photoshop. Last but not least in this preset, we see that the background contents are going to be set for us, and they're going to be set as white. Now, we have other choices here for these background contents. We can set them as black or as our default background color that we've set in Photoshop preferences. We can set them as transparent, and we can even come in here and do a custom setting on the background contents if we want to. Um, this is significant to us in two ways. One is the background contents of this new document are going to be our first layer. And that's what's going to be in that first layer, whatever we set here. Also, it has an additional impact when we start layering more layers on top of this document. The background contents can potentially come into play as you're building this document up. For right now, we're going to stick with the white background contents at a future video on layers. We'll come in and talk about the background contents more, but for now, we're just going to go with this default setting and live with that. So let's hop over here, click on the Create button, and in a matter of a couple seconds, our new document will be displayed here on the screen for us. 
So here we have it. Our new Photoshop document has been created for us. Um, we repeatedly say it's a new blank Photoshop document, but the reality is it's not a blank Photoshop document. It is a document made up of one layer, and that document is full of white pixels. That is a very subtle point because when you see a screen full of white pixels, you don't necessarily consciously think about that. But this document is completely populated on this layer with all white pixels. Now, let's take a little confirmation over here at the layer control panel. This is where we would expect to see the layers that exist within the document. And we can see, in fact, we do have a new layer here called the background layer that's available and waiting for us. Okay. Now we're going to deviate here for just a second. Let's say that you come over here and this layers control panel is invisible. You're like, wow, Tim's rattling on and on about the layers control panel and there's not one here. What do I do? Well, that can happen and it could have been docked somewhere else or it could have been turned off. So let's show you real quickly how to fix that just in case. All the control panels that live in Photoshop live up here under the window menu. And if you look in the window menu, not too far down into that menu, you'll see a list of control panel names right here. This list is in alphabetical order, so it's really easy to find them if you know what the name of it is. The ones that have check marks on them are the ones that are currently open and visible and potentially docked over here in the control panel toolbar on the side. You can see that our layers control panel doesn't have a check mark next to it anymore. So we can simply click on that to turn it back on. There's also a F7 shortcut key if you don't want to come up here to the menu. But either clicking on layers in this drop down menu or F7 will bring the layers control panel back. Now the layers control panel just popped up here in the middle of the interface primarily because I left it there but it's in a place where I don't want it to be, and it's probably in a place where you wouldn't want it to be either. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layers control panel, grab its tab right here, and we're gonna drag it off here to the side where the rest of our control panels are at. And as I move around here, you'll notice as I get right over the top of the box that it was originally docked in, or the control panel group as we call them, we get a blue frame around that control panel group. That's Photoshop telling us, hey, if you drop this control panel here, we're gonna make it a part of that group. And there it is. Great. Now it's docked over there and it will live over there so we can find it over here all the time and use it. I don't like the layers control panel as my last tab over there. Probably a personal preference doesn't really matter, but I tend to use it more than I use the channels or pass control panel. So I really like it to live over here to the left as the first control panel. I just carefully drag that tab over and say, hey, this is where I want you to be. I want you to be first in this group. So there, our layers control panel is back, and if I'm talking about it and you didn't have it there, now you got it and you can follow along. One more thing I wanna do here real quickly, I like to work with my document as large as I can possibly have it on the screen. I just wanna use all the real estate I can possibly use. You'll notice that our new document is docked inside a tab called Untitled-1. This is part of the tabbed document interface that Photoshop offers. And if I use the Command-0 shortcut key sequence, that's Control-0 for your Windows users, you will see that that document pops up to full size and fits into that window. And it fits into that window in a very special way. It goes as large as it can possibly go within that tabbed document panel without cutting off any of the pixels on the horizontal or vertical edge. That's very important. It's respecting the aspect ratio of the original document and saying, hey, I'll make this as big as I can up into the point where I have to stop because I don't want to cut off any of the pixels in the picture. So we're seeing this document now as large as possible given the screen real estate that's been dedicated to this tabbed document frame. Okay, so we have our new Photoshop document, and we've expanded the view of that document to be as large as it can possibly be within the tabbed frame that it lives within. Now that we have this new Photoshop document, let's get back to what we came here to explore in the first place, layers in Photoshop. Right now, this document has one single layer in it. And if we look at it, we can see it right here in the layers control panel, our one layer called background. That background layer is full of white pixels. 
In fact, every single pixel in this background layer is white. And we shouldn't really be surprised by that because that's what we told Photoshop to do in the new document dialog box. We said make background contents white. Well, for once, we got what we asked for. At the moment, we could say that this document is very similar to a JPEG file in that everything that's in this document is on one single layer. And the same is true for JPEG files. The JPEG file specification says that JPEG only supports one single layer and every pixel that lives within that JPEG file resides on that one single layer. This document being a Photoshop document has the potential to have additional layers added to it if we were to decide that that would aid in the editing process. And that's why we're spending a little bit of time pointing out the fact that this background layer is filled with white pixels. Because at some point in the future, those additional layers that we may choose to add could potentially interact with those white pixels. And it's nice to remember that they're there and a part of the equation, as it were. Okay. This document is a little bit special in that it was created as a new blank Photoshop document. And I use the word blank kind of loosely because it's hard to picture a layer of all white pixels as being blank. It's truly not. Photoshop treats this new background layer in a special way. In addition to the background label that we keep mentioning, we also see that this layer has a lock icon on it. And if you had been here for the other 17 takes of this section of the tutorial, you would have heard me call this a lick icon and a lycon and a like icon and lichen and well, who knows what all it got called, but I think we're over that now. So what is this lock icon? mean to us in editing this Photoshop document? Well, to see an example of what we're confronting here, let's zip over here to the left-hand side of the interface to the toolbar, and we're going to hover over the Move tool. The Move tool can be activated by clicking on the icon that you see underneath our cursor right now, or hitting the V key. Once the Move tool is activated, I'm going to take my Move tool cursor and move back to the center of my document. Now, if you've used the Move tool before, you will recall that it has the ability to move pixels around within your picture. And it does it in one of three very specific ways. Way number one, the layer that is currently active, in this case our background layer, we can drag that cursor up, down, left, right, or any combination of the above, and those pixels on that layer will follow it around. If we have more than one layer active, and hey, you heard it here first, you can have more than one layer active, all the pixels on all the active layers will move around in the same manner that you move the move icon around. And last but not least, the same thing applies to an active selection. If there is an active selection, all of the pixels that are in that active selection will be moved around relative to the movement of the move tool icon. Well, there you have it. Let's give that a try. So I'm clicking here in the center and I'm dragging my move tool cursor up and to the left. Now I get the customary pop-up that I'm expecting to see that tells me how far I have moved these pixels in both the X and the Y axis directions. But what I'm not seeing is a band of empty space in this document opposite the direction that I just made my move. So you see, I've taken all these pixels, and it's hard to tell because they're all white, but I have tried to take all these pixels and drag them upwards and to the left, which means there are now pixels that are outside the upper and left borders or canvas area of this document. And down to the right and to the bottom, I should have empty or what we refer to as transparent areas denoted by a gray checkerboard pattern that shows that there are no pixels in that area right now. But clearly, these pixels aren't moving. All right, let's let go of the mouse. Oh, wait. 
Here's a clue, a little dialog box from Photoshop that says, the currently selected layer is a background layer. Okay, we knew that. You cannot move a background layer or change its stacking order, blending mode, or opacity. Sorry, or opacity. Well, that's not very clear. Let's interpret. You cannot move a background layer means that you cannot move pixels on a background layer. They are locked into place by that lock icon. Changing its stacking order means that because it's a background layer, it always has to be on the bottom of a stack of layers in a Photoshop document. So if we had five layers in this document, this background layer would always be beneath the other four layers. Okay, blending mode. We're gonna punt here. Blending modes are incredibly powerful feature in Photoshop, but they really have a whole series of tutorials dedicated just to understanding those alone. So we're gonna come back to that in future tutorials. Last but not least, let's discuss opacity. Opacity refers to the ability to see or not see through a layer. If we say that the opacity of a layer is 100%, that means that that layer is completely opaque. You cannot see through it. If we say that the opacity of a layer is 70%, well then that layer will show 70% of itself and allow 30% of the layer below it to show through. Another way of thinking about this is we can always discuss opacity and think about its inverse transparency. So if a layer is 50% opaque, it is also 50% transparent to what's underneath it. If that same layer is 60% opaque, then we say it's also 40% transparent. More about that opacity versus transparency issue in future tutorials when we get to additional layers. But for right now, what we have just learned is we cannot change the opacity of a locked background layer. It will always be at 100%. Moving on in this dialog box, Photoshop tells us, however, you can convert it to a normal layer and then change any of these attributes. And there's a button right here to do that. So I could click right here and there we go. Now we can see that transparent border to the right and to the bottom that we expected. We can see that yes, in fact, our pixels have been shifted up to the left and the right. And if we quickly go over here and take a look at the tab strip, in our layers control panel for what was our background layer, we see that it's been renamed to layer zero and the like, <laughs> did it again, and the lock icon is gone. Now you don't have to go through that dialog box and those steps to do that. You can simply come over and click on the lock, on the lock icon and turn it off. All right, as simple as this tutorial has been, it has uncovered a number of interesting attributes that will help us to understand layers in Photoshop as we move forward. First of all, every document has at least one layer. Depending on the document type, it could have additional layers. We know that JPEG files now are always made up of one layer, but Photoshop documents and TIFF documents, for example, can have additional layers added to them. We now know about the locked background layer and how to unlock that background layer if the need should arise. And we also know that layers, not just background layers, can contain pixels that have color values or can contain pixels that have no color value assigned to them at all and therefore appear to be transparent. This has uncovered a lot of information here in this first tutorial. And I want you to tuck this away because as we move on to adding multiple layers, understanding this background layer or a layer underneath another layer is really key to unlocking how layers can interact with one another.
Well, that's it, folks. That's a wrap. It's the end of our first video in the Layers in Photoshop series. We hope that this video unlocked some of the information on single layer Photoshop documents and more importantly, helped you to understand what to do when you run into that locked background layer. As we move forward through this series, we will begin to discover multiple layer documents. We will take a look at the interactions between those layers in those multiple layer documents. And we will eventually wrap up with a video on layers, tips, tricks, and techniques. Some of the really cool stuff that layers can do in a Photoshop document. Folks, all the power of Photoshop is tied up in understanding the use of multiple layers. Things like HDR, focus stacking, composites, all of the really fun creations that you can put together in Photoshop are all built upon the concept of layers. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We hope to see you at future videos. And remember, as we always say, learning equals skills, practice equals mastery. We'll see you out there. Thank you.